guys, it's Ryan. Welcome to video 109. In this video, Mike will show you all the progress on the layout so far. This will include painting the base of the junkyard to the track placement, and you will even learn how he makes his own smash cars. So without further ado, take it away, Mike. Okay, everybody. You can see that the ice house is going to have to move out just a little bit. I'm going to put a little piece of track between that curved first turnout and the unit track so that I can slope that slightly. Then the first turnout will be here and the turnout will go, the, the diverging route will go towards the engine house. I have the track glued through the engine house. I have all the detail redone in there. I think I've showed you that. Uh, I have the new roof on the uh, car shed and I have the track lined up with the uh, engine house and it's sitting kind of up because there's wire under it but that curbing that with the air conditioner and stuff unit and everything goes on the side of that and then there'll be some concrete out in the back there just a little bit of concrete probably a strip of concrete in between the two buildings and then I still have let me get up on the stool I still have space for a track to come out of the engine house, I mean out of the the car shed, around the side of the engine house, and come back into that turnout right there. And then off of that turnout, we have a track that will go back, paralleling that track, and go along up to the car shed back there that will be dead storage. Or repaired storage, no matter how you look at it, but they, it will be a storage track. Uh, not exactly sure if I'll have anything else on uh, the track in the back where Schmelly Meats is, but um, that's approximately where the turnouts are going to go. I may have to swap out this turnout for a long turnout simply because I think this is turning just a little bit too sharp to get where I want it to go. Um, so I may change that out with a long turnout. But we'll see how that goes once I start laying track. Uh, I could start doing that tonight, but I just don't feel like it. It was a it was 108 here today, and I've got to get up early in the morning and change the oil in the tundra, which, by the way, many of you may not know, takes eight and a half quarts of oil, and at full synthetic with the oil filter, it was around 94 bucks to change the oil if I do it myself which requires also taking the skid plate off. So it was a little on the hot side to tackle that job. I'm going to tackle that in the morning. But anyway, here we are. Um, it took me a while to get uh, this roof done, um, simply because I had to paint those skylights. And um, I know people are going to say they're turquoise. Well, it's, it's bouncing off the sky, and that's just the color they are. Um... And if you don't like it, tough beans. Um, there'll be a lot of other, there can be a lot of other small buildings around. And I like the fact that I have a large open area back here to put a uh, scrapyard in to kind of like build the scrapyard up a little bit. So that's probably what I'll wind up doing. I may straighten the track out a little bit to the scrapyard or I may just leave it like that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I do believe that that's it for now. Okay, I know that I've shown this before and the fuel rack and the buildings are kind of like they are. You've seen that the uh, junkyard is here. What you haven't seen is all the other junk. Um, most of these junk piles were already here. I have added the barrels by Model Tech. And I made my own stacked cars. And I think they look way better than those stacked cars. Those cars are good, but they're... Somebody in California, I believe, used to make those and sell them on eBay. And they look pretty good. But I made these, and I think they look good. And, um, unfortunately, I didn't take video of while I was making them. But what they are is two of the Cato automobiles 
with a classic metalworks stuck in somewhere in some of them. And then I just uh, put super glue in between each one and put them in a vise. The tires towards the, uh, well, the knurled side of the vise. And then behind on the roof side of the cars, I put a putty knife and I just mashed the crap out of them until they wouldn't mash anymore. And if they fell apart, I just glued them back together. Uh, then I sprayed them in a, with a rust color. Then I sprayed them with a textured uh, dark rust color. Both of the colors I got at Lowe's. And uh, after that was done, it pretty much covered up the color on all of the cars. So I just, uh, after that, I took um, mineral spirits on a brush and just brushed over them to reveal some of the paint color. So anyway, that's how I made the crushed automobiles. So now I have quite a few crushed automobiles in there. That stuff will kind of lay out like that. I mean, I, I may shuffle it around a little bit, um, especially so the crane can get around the yard and some vehicles probably, a vehicle. They usually have a goofy looking yard vehicle with an A-arm on it or something. And, and I may try and scratch something like that. But in general, that's how the junkyard will look. And I know it's hard to visualize with the pink foam, but that's fixing to change. I'm going to pull up all this track and everything and pull up the buildings and all that, and I'm going to paint that a dark brown color, well, a brown color. I just can't stand looking at that pink foam. It's hard for me to comprehend beyond it. So, uh, by the way, I moved this turnout over here out a little bit so that these turnouts will line up better. Anyways, we'll see all that when I get that far. But... Um, I just want you guys to see the junkyard, and I'm going to take all this off of here and start painting. And this is Father's Day, so I know this won't come out probably till later, but uh, I'm thinking of everybody and wishing everybody a happy Father's Day. Okay, now I've got at least a layer of paint on there. So I can see what I'm doing, or if I mark on something, I can see where I marked instead of where I've marked 1,500 times. So I don't know exactly what's next. I also, um, in case you didn't notice, I also ran the wire down through the table for this turnout here. So I have those two turnout uh, control wires hanging down underneath, but there's what we've got right now. I'll see what I get to the rest of the day. Okay, gang, lots of tools sitting out here, but I have all of this track soldered all the way back. I have this track soldered on that goes all the way around over there. And I have that soldered and that soldered and that soldered. Now all I've got to do is add a couple little pieces out the back of that building there, and I can either solder them or not solder them. Probably doesn't make any difference because I don't think a locomotive will roll all the way out there. But we'll probably do it anyway. Uh, I'm not going to pull it up there for you, but the fuel facility fits right outside the building there between those two tracks. Um, somewhere in here I'll put the sanding facility. Uh, I'm going to... I'm likely going to give that double one to Gavin. It's uh, Once you get everything out here, it's a little, looks a little bit too big. So I'll probably make one of the uh, oh, American Limited or whoever makes them. I don't know who makes them. I've got one down there by the other engine house, and I have another one inside. They're uh, cast metal. Single. But anyway, the track work is coming along. Got the hard parts done. Now there will be a track coming off right over there and it will just be a dead track that will go down and alongside the building over there, probably. And I may put some kind of a some kind of a hokey little business back in there. Don't know. Anyway, 
that's to be determined. I did find a pile of small pieces of track that I had cut before in my cabinet over there. So I'll be using those up in those little places like back in there. I do not have the track to this side of the engine house or the, the scrap yard. But that's coming. And that's about it for today. But you can see I got the wires down through the, the layout. For those two buildings the engine house and the, the car shop so i'm making progress it's just slow progress okay everybody here we are i do believe that all the turnouts are soldered up the track is all pinned down in place it is not ballasted of course and I have some of the junk sitting around where I think it might go. And I'm considering removing all the junk from this thing and lowering this whole thing down. Because I think it looks odd being up and everything else down. And I need to kind of reposition some stuff. So I'm thinking about redoing the whole scrapyard. Um, using all the same pieces. But soaking it in water and getting all the ballast out between all the different vignettes there and uh, just redo the whole thing and do it from scratch kinda and put a fence around the whole thing because I've got too much stuff crowded down here at the end and too crowded close to the railroad buildings that I don't care for too much and I yet I have to st still leave room for the crane to go around and load cars and that kind of stuff so I just think it's too pinched together, especially with the entrance to the yard right here. If I take all this fence off of here and I reposition all this stuff, then I can position it close to the track and put the entrance gate on the end down here. Um, so I can I can make it into what it needs to be. So that's a high possibility. So the, the junkyard... It's going to be here. It just may not be in that configuration. Uh, I put a pit in there. A Pico pit. Um, and that is pretty much ready to go. Uh, the, the engine house is in place. The track is soldered in going into the uh, car shop. The car shop track is good coming out and going around. And then we have the fuel rack there. And all we need is the sanding facility, a little sanding unit, and we should be kind of ready to go there. And I have a car washer, and you know what? I'm thinking about putting it back here in this vacant space. Never had room for one, but it's a simple car wash. All it is is one that just washes and brushes, but maybe when they get done working with a the car, they wash it. I don't know. At least on my railroad. Maybe not SP, but on my railroad they do. Um, the wires down through for the lighting in the uh, ice house. I have not reconfigured the corral, and I'm not sure I'm going to. It almost looks okay right there, and I think I'm just going to leave it. Uh, Schmelly Meats is in place. The wire is run down through. And then I don't know what I'll fill that area up with back there. Um, that remains to be seen. So, this is what we have. These are the tracks we have. These are where the tracks are going to be. And if we go back here, this is kind of how you see it when you come in the layout. And I like this angle much better. And if I walk around here kind of slowly, you can get the concept. It just looks more fluid to me. So anyway, uh, that's probably all I'm going to be able to work up this week. Um, I have some things going on the beginning of next week. Um, and I don't know how far I'll get continuing on, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And just before we go, don't forget to take a look at the vintage page to see Mike's locomotives for sale.
that about wraps it up for this video. But we will see you next time. So thanks for watching.